In this video, we're gonna check out Art Graph. Watercolor Graphite. I have never heard of this before. I've heard of graphite before. Graphite is the thing that is in your drawing pencils, your graphite, mechanical pencils. Most drawings I do start with graphite in one way or another. And of course I've heard of watercolor. It's pigment that's activated by water that you paint and it flows and mixes and you can increase the viscosity or density of the watercolor. You can create beautiful flowing images or intensify the watercolor effects to create really intense tone and color mixes. Art graph, this uh, liquid graphite, is apparently a mixture of both. And that just sounded really interesting to me. So we have water, we have a brush, and we have the liquid graphite. I'm sort of hesitant to start just because this is really nice looking like, look at that, just look at it. So nice, it's gonna disappear once I start. Ah, oh, there it goes. All right, this is the first bit, you ready? Whoa, wow, that really is nice. Okay, I'm interested. All right, let's, uh, let's see how we go doing a bit of a gradient. There you go, so we got a nice, fairly, clean stroke and then just slowly adding more by mixing in more of the graphite and see if I can blend to a darkness by adding that water and blending out. Well, it's sort of hard to control. Do you know what? I need to do this not in a pencil graphite sketchbook. I need to get watercolor paper. Freaking disorganized. Everything's a mess. Found it. So sometimes, especially if you're creating a gradient, it's good to start off with the water first. So just like a nice big open area to see if I can get a, a gradient. It's in the graphite. Oh my God. It's got that little sparkle of, like you know how graphite pencils, when you lay it down thick, it sort of starts to shine, but it's not reacting the same way as watercolors. You can see it's not really spreading it. I guess it's heavier, sort of sitting where I paint it. Whereas with watercolors, in fact, let's do a direct comparison. Rob! Can I have some paper towel, please? Rob works here now, I haven't told you guys yet. For those of you who don't know, Rob made the first Artie Games app and he's on tabletop time and he's a friend who's been around for a long time. Thank you, Rob. I want to create a smooth transition. I guess the benefit too is if it's like watercolor, I can build up. That's really what this video is going to be. Not only are we exploring it for the first time, but we're going to see what its strengths and weaknesses are. And then by the time we've finished our dabble, we're going to know how to apply it to our dive to get the most out of it. If we can get anything out of it. Watercolor time, let's go. So I've got a bit of graph <laughs> graphite in it just because of the water, but guess what I wanted to demonstrate is when I mix the watercolor in, it clouds. Just look at that, it spreads really easily and on its own. So that's the first immediate difference I noticed. So look, again, it's not a perfect gradient. It's still, it's still sinking in different recesses. And when you put them directly next to each other, they both are doing a similar thing. So maybe I was too quick to, to suggest that maybe the graphite isn't as good. Let's just do some regular old graphite. Watercolor. Graphite, graphite watercolor. So immediately it's more like watercolor than graphite. And the biggest difference obviously between watercolor and graphite as separate mediums. So it's definitely more like the watercolor than the graphite. Let's see how it goes with a little bit of layering, a little bit more time, and maybe even just mixing in a little bit of actual graphite. I was gonna do like a, a ball, like a sphere, but I'm like, I've done so many balls lately. So let's make this video a ball free zone. I'm done with balls. But uh, Venom 2 is coming out soon. I feel like that's got potential for a bit of that texture and unpredictability that might be cool with this stuff. It's better than balls. Uh, I feel like that's a good tagline for the movie. <laughs> Venom 2. It's better than balls. <laughs> so, Venom time. You do an artwork of Venom. Venom! Venom. Venom. V -v -v Venom. V -v -v Venom. That's, this is what this voiceover is now. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha. 
Honestly, this liquid graphite stuff was pretty cool to work with. As you can see, I worked with it pretty heavily to start with. I'm gonna to say too heavily, especially because I wanna build up and it doesn't have a huge amount of contrast because it's graphite, it's more like a gray. And the darker it is, you sort of get more of that shiny effect. Either way, it was very much like watercolor to work with at the end of the day. But the real question I have is if this is worthwhile as far as uh, using it with or competing against uh, traditional graphite pencils. So with a lot of the core shading and, and coloring, not coloring, because there's no color, with the tone down, that's probably the way to say it. But I'm so professional today. I, uh, I went on to do the uh, the teeth, or the spit specifically, and I did one little dangly bit of spit on one of the teeth and it looked really bad. So I tried to see if the eraser works because I thought, hey, it's graphite, graphite eraser, right? Uh, it was wet, that didn't help, so I just tore up the paper. In the end, I solved this problem in two ways. One, added a bit more strength to the shading on the back side of the teeth all around the mouth, which created a distraction. And second, added water and texture all throughout the rest of the piece in the background, again, to create a distraction, but also because, look, at the end of the day, it's venom. And splats and smears and texture and grit is what makes venom, venom. The venom, I can't, I just can't help myself. Get over here! Get over here! We've got Mortal Kombat in our heads now. Hey, that's coming out today when by the time this video comes out. Ooh, we could be topical. I don't know what character does that in Mortal Kombat. Is it in the theme song? The theme song. Yeah, there is. Mortal Kombat! Mortal, Mortal Kombat. I thought it was just like a random yelp of pain. It barely does. Like, yes, it says Mortal Kombat. What I thought it? that's what it was. There is no context to why we've gone into talking about this after doing a Venom artwork with Liquid Graphite. But I can hear why for my whole life I always thought it was oh, rah, rah, rah. We are way off track. Or are we? Or are we? Because usually the way I test an art medium is to put it into a fight to the death. <gasps> Mortal Kombat, I believe, is out. You told me earlier today, it's the movie, I saw the Red Band trailer, it looks crazy cool, like I'd watch the crap out of that. This video was not sponsored by Mortal Kombat. I'm just a 90s kid. <laughs> We are going to put liquid graphite up against graphite. Like I said, battle to the death is gonna be the funnest way to do it. And because we're in the raw, 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 raw theme, we're gonna do that. I stand by what I grew up understanding because it feels right, even though I know it's wrong now. Mortal Kombat characters. We have to do a Mortal Kombat art piece. Scorpion and Sub-Zero against each other. So which is Scorpion and which is Sub-Zero? Tray side up is that the gra liquid graphite is Sub-Zero. It's Scorpion. Scorpion, Sub-Zero. We make good decisions on this channel. So Sub-Zero being drawn with the graphite pencil. I decided to go, as you can see, in the more traditional Mortal Kombat aesthetic. First of all, because I mean, I haven't seen the movie yet, even though it's just come out. But Mortal Kombat, no matter whether the movie is good or bad, is always gonna be those good old days of sitting in front of the console. Actually, no, it wasn't my console, it was my friend's console because it was a bit too violent for my parents to be okay with it. <laughs> Drawing Sub-Zero with the graphite came with a few challenges. I mean, how to communicate ice without cold colors. Likewise, Scorpion, I, I had to do this as clearly as possible through texture and through using the graphite, which I think adds to the challenge. And because the characters look so similar, I, I think is a pretty cool apples to apples comparison. So Sub-Zero, the way obviously I needed to make him look cold is by surrounding him with a little bit of ice and also having a little bit of mist and uh, not smoke, what do you call it? Like steam, like that frosty steam stuff especially coming out near his mouth. But that's pretty much it. That's sort of all I got, because everything else is kind of the same between the two characters other than color, which is the main indicator. With that said, I actually think that was enough and ended up by the end working really effectively. But as for using the graphite, 
I mean, it's your standard drawing experience. It was pretty good. I did find towards the end after doing the shading throughout the character that I did want to start blending a little bit, which I allowed myself to do in the background with the uh, with the misty, steamy stuff. What do you call it? Frost, the frost steam. They, that sounds like a kit, like it counters itself and anyways i actually decided in the end to not blend or over blend on the character because at the end of the day it's about the comparison this is the graphite pencil versus the liquid graphite and i just really wanted to make sure there was a clear one-to-one -one comparison which meant cutting out some extra techniques or mediums or materials that would change the original state of the media being used Next, it's time to crack out that liquid graphite and see how it compares. And straight out of the tin, I'm, I feel like I'm getting familiar with the experience. It goes down really well. The thing that I found very quickly frustrating when trying to draw a, uh, I don't know if you call this a painting or an illustration anymore, but when you're trying to create an artwork using liquid graphite with any element of control, it becomes really hard. Soon as the brush and water touch the liquid graphite, you have a very dark pigment on the brush. So even if I touched that wet brush to the graphite for a very small period of time, it went down on the paper dark, even if I added a lot of water. So if I wanted to have a subtle, sort of very soft layer of graphite, cut water graphite, I found I had to dip go into the liquid graphite and then dip in the water again to dilute the graphite in the brush before applying it to the illustration. And that added not only more steps, but also a lot of unpredictability. I didn't know how much pigment was gonna remain in the brush after I watered it down after putting in the pigment. You can see how it's adding steps and confusion. That isn't ideal. Working with watercolors is certainly clearer when it comes to the dilution, the saturation of the pigment in the water before you you painted on the paper. But with that said, even though that was a challenge, I did sort of get a feel for it. And it's pretty straightforward. And at the same time, also uh, has a pretty cool feel and look to it. It does feel like graphite when it's dried. It has that little bit of sheen to it. And it is a reasonably unique material to work with and went down on top of the graphite sketch really well. So after one full layer of the piece, and I'd say painting 80% of it, I dried it thoroughly, came back, and then put down one more layer, just adding a bit more dimension. Again, doing this multi-dip thing to make sure I had the right consistency, and sometimes trying to backtrack or quickly add more water directly onto the illustration to dilute back some of that color because it was too intense when I put it down. It was really hard to predict and control, but I did sort of get used to it, and at the end of the day, it does create a pretty organic feel as a result. Last but not least, it's always nice when you're working with a really organic medium like this to just add a little bit of organic texture, which I thought could be cool in the form of like ashes falling through the air around him. Again, to, to hopefully emphasize the fact that these are two different characters, this one of course being Scorpion, the fire character. And I think in the end, even though I had zero color to work with, the difference between these two characters was actually communicated pretty well visually between the two mediums. And I actually do feel like the mediums that I ended up using for the, the specific characters did fit them both specifically. I think there's something frosty and cold about the texture of the graphite pencil on the paper and something dark and burnt and harsh looking about the liquid graphite in Scorpion. So here it is, my liquid graphite experiments. By the way, guys, at the end of the day, it's all about what you wanna make. And there will be things that this works well with that no other medium can do in the same way. But is it as practical or as easy to control as some other mediums? Probably not, but it's fun. And I had fun here today. I really hope you did too. And if you did, do the cliche YouTube calls to action. I've been doing this for a long time. It's <laughs> like, it's just sort of like, I know it becomes a lot for you to listen to every day. So you know what? I'm, I'm not gonna ask you to like this video. I'm not even gonna ask you to subscribe to, the, to this channel, which has produced thousands of 
quality art related animation and challenge content for you to enjoy. I am not gonna ask you to click the notification bell and I am certainly not gonna ask you to comment and suggest some cool stuff you want me to try because that would take up your time and attention in a way that, you know what, today, I'm not gonna ask that of you. Instead, I'm gonna tell you I love you and hope you had a good viewing session. Do you think the reverse psychology is gonna work? <laughs> Thanks so much for watching guys. This was really fun. I hope you enjoyed it. More videos over there, which you don't have to click on. Otherwise, that is it for now. And until next time. Roar, roar, roar!